Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the developers focus group meeting once again. Um, how is everyone doing? I I am going to be sending the doc now and then sharing my screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes. All right, so um, if you could just write your name and um, just tell us what open projects you're working on currently. Mm -hmm. Let me know. Okay, please could you mute? If you are not speaking um, in the meeting, please could you mute? All right, thank you very much. Okay, so um, let's put down our names and then what we are currently working on. So, for me, um, working on the budget, uh, the, the new metrics that we are adding to the event budget, and um, we are going to be making that uh, version four, and that involves adding new metrics, both to the in-person events and the virtual events. Currently, um, the PRs have been created and um, we're just made, waiting for some couple of decisions to be made before we match the PRs. Okay, so Desmond, what are you working on? You said you're working on the badge and API. What aspect are you working on? Um, okay, so I am working on adding a new uh, uh, column to what you are saving to the database. So, um, so want to differentiate if uh, an event is a virtual event or an in-person event. So, so I'm adding those new colors to the database as well, so, and you know migrating, uh, updating the database with old events, and then also mm -hmm. uh, setting up a uh, the automation for new events to save, um, you know. Whether it is virtual or specific database. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. Well, well so, done. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm new here and I just joined from my laptop. So could you share the file again? The doc, right? Okay. Yes. I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. So that's serial, right? Yes, that's serial. Hi, serial. So welcome to the Developers Focus Group meeting. Uh, we are happy to have you around. Um, I, I am sure, I'm confident that you're going to enjoy it here. So what do you do? Okay, so I'm a DevOps engineer or an SRE. Yes, nice. so that's what I do. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you work with um, what particular stack? I know that Python is um, a very uh, popular one, but uh, could you just mention some of the tools that you use? Yeah, so most often uh, Python, I'm very comfortable with Python, but most of the languages I'm able to understand, but not necessarily be able to write it myself, but I'm able mm -hmm. to understand and make sure it's being deployed here. Yeah. So that's what I do. But 
most of them I'm comfortable with Python. That's cool. DevOps. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Syria. So um let's move on to the um next agenda. I, I'm trying to see. So Amza said is open for contribution. Amza, there are many issues that's waiting for people to just you know pick up and you know work on them. What's going on, Amza? <laughs> Nelson said not Hi, for now. Thing, yeah. Okay. Hi, Hamza. Mm -hmm. How are you? So what's up now? Uh, just <laughs> starting from this coming week, I will be available for contribution, and then during the weekend, I will nice. Look for the, I will look for the repositories and pick up the particular issue that I can solve. Cool. Okay. Looking forward to that. So very quickly, um, I I thought that um it would be nice to um bring some trainings into our focus group meeting so that we can get better and better with our collaboration and contributions to the chaos community and even other communities that we might belong to. Uh we noticed no no in, in the while maintaining um our projects currently we have um we have some projects that are ongoing at chaos so we have the budget project we have the event budget project we have Ogo, we have grimo lab and the, we also have um afos that's um, the african open source please could you mute um, if you're not speaking um so this project and you know we have a lot of um, improvements to make on this project and um, we are always looking for contribute contributors and contributions to the project but what we've discovered is that um uh, we have so so there are a lot of issues that happen when the that when prs are being created right and some people are even at a loss on how to even go about making contributions and so we thought it would be nice to have training workshops around this problem so that um, people can get better with making contributions and then um, even begin to find their feet um, around how to make meaningful contributions to projects. So I just want to sample very quickly um, who can um, just unmute and tell us um, what challenges you have faced, you know, while trying to contribute to open source so far. Who would like to share? All right. Let, me, let me volunteer okay. to go first. Okay, nice. All right. All right. So uh, I'm a big fan of... Uh, Aga software and the projects around Aga. So I've been following Aga for, for a while since I joined the community. So uh, I found it very difficult to like uh, set up the environment and uh, contribute to the Aga project, the Aga co project. Then I, uh, mm -hmm. then at a point of time, Sean shared a document for me that. Uh, it's a walkthrough on how I can uh, set up my environment, set up the development environment for my machine and then get it. And then, unluckily for me, then I got busy for mm -hmm. over three months now. Uh, but uh, starting from next week, I will be available for the project and the ready. So that's an update. Since then, I didn't look back at the documents, but but I will have time now. I have more time now to do and look at it and then see what I can do. Okay, so so far it's been time constraints on your part, right? Exactly, that's what. Mm. Okay, is there any other challenge that is related to the project itself? Uh, for now, I haven't because uh, uh, I... I haven't even set up the development environment. 
So I have okay. a room to end with. For now, it's just time. Okay. No, okay, nice. Okay, so um, thank you very much, um, Amza. If anyone wants to go next, I'll just take one more and then we can move. Who would like to say something? Okay, no problem. So does that not mean that uh, we don't have a need for this meeting? <laughs> Everybody's muted. Like, do we all like we've all got it um on point? We are good to go and all. Okay, let me let me say something. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, in the last meeting we had, we talked about them um, that giving more context to our PR, so that you can give the person that is reviewing it. Um, to know in details what we did. So, because me, I, there are some PR I've created and it has not been met. So, I want to know if because of, I didn't go into detail more. That's why it has not been met mm -hmm. or something. So, that's my own mm -hmm. challenge. That is the area I would like some clarity on. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. So clarity on why your PR was not matched. Okay. Any other person before we go? Okay. All right. So, so let's just talk about this. If you can see my presentation slides, please let me know. Can you see? Can anyone see? Nope. Okay, so I guess I have to then reshare. Hold on. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. Okay. So all right. So um what I have discovered um so far as the maintainer of um three different projects. One, the event budget and the DEI, the DEI event budget rather, and um, the budget API, and then the budget website, the front end aspect. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is that um, we have a lot of contributions that are not, um, as descriptive and um, well detailed as it should be. And so we find ourselves as maintainers, um, let me just, for lack of a better word, use the word saddled with pull requests that um, might not even answer the problem that it is intended to solve. And so you see sometimes PR sitting down for weeks. And um, apart from that, it might not just be it has to do with the particular contribution, but rather the, another contribution that is dependent on the other contribution. So for instance, what um, Hugo, um Nelson was saying was that, um, so his PR has been sitting. What I know from, 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 that particular um, PR is that I think your PR is, is linked, is dependent on another PR. I think you need an API for your own contribution to work. And probably that API has not been picked up or somebody else is sitting on it and they have not finished. So those are the issues on ground that usually make PRs to take longer than it should to get matched. And so we feel the need to like come around and let's talk around these problems so that when once contributors know how best to um, make their contributions, when they are aware of the weight that is upon the contributions that they make, then it will be easier for them to, um, you know, take the responsibility to ensure that um, the 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 their own side, they, they are able to carry it well and that things are not failing at their own hand. Um, I, I, 
I hope I'm able to get something at first. So, uh, okay, so I'm trying to, can you still see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to um, go to the next one. Okay, so hold on. Hmm. Let me see if I need to share the entire screen. Let's see. Hold on. Let me see if I can then move. Okay. All right. So can you see the next one now? Can I see this one now? Yes, I can see. Okay. Please, let's make it as interactive as possible. So I can't see people. I can only see my presentation. So... Um, getting feedback from you will make me understand that you are actually following. Can we do that? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, all right. Fine. So the, the all right. Yes, so okay. Thank you very much. So um, what I would say, number one, is that when you want to get started uh contributing to any project, whether even at chaos or any other community or project that you want to work on. The first thing that you do when you get onto that repo is to look for the contributing.md guide or the readme.md guide. In fact, we have <clears throat> bigger projects, you know, projects like TensorFlow, Python, you know, all those big, big projects that they have several markdown files that serve as guides for how to contribute. You know, because there is a very big project, if you don't make meaningful contribution you might not even get your pr matched because they, they, you know there is a lot of um, um, ongoing activity people are busy and all that so you want to take people's time as less as possible so that um um you don't you, you try as much as possible not to waste people time people's time in, you know if i if i can say that so that at the end of the day um people are able to look at your PR, they understand what you did as fast as they can, and then they are able to review and then approve your pull request. So how do you get to know that? Simply just go to the to, to the repo, the contributed.md and take time to study it. Don't just jump into, oh, this is an issue, I need to create the issue, no. It's best to read through the contributing MD guide and every other, maybe the style guide, the formatting guide, very important to read through all of these things and try to follow them while making your contributions. Then another thing that I found very useful, which I even think is very um, important for our own um, use case, that is um, the projects that we contribute to at Chaos, is that it's important to attend meetings as much as you can and be involved with the ongoing conversations around the project that you're trying to contribute to. And why, why is that? Because the more you do that, the more you get to understand the project, you get to understand the why around um, probably new features that um, the stakeholders are asking for, right? You are even able to also contribute contribute your own um, opinions, your own suggestions to how we can make the software better. So attending meetings is very important. For the budget projects that we have at hand now, we have the um, DEI uh, working group at Chaos. Um, they call it the the budget working group, the budget DEI working group, and that, that most of the time, what we talk about is about the budget project, the budget um everything that has to do with the budget project, the metrics, the 
the website itself and all other topics that has to do with the budget. So um, if you attend, you get to understand what the project is about, where that project is going and how you can contribute better. Okay, so um, the next one is that, uh, so once you now understand the project, you are ready to make your contribution. Then you, the next thing is you, you've you also um, read through the contributing.md guide. The next thing is to look for the issues that you can solve. Or another way is um, probably you even went to, let's, let's, I'm going to be using um, the budget website as an example of the software you want to contribute to. So you go to the software, to the website itself, and then you test around, you know, you look around the website, you know, with the height of a user in order to discover, discover whatever problem could uh, be, whatever could be wrong with that website or whatever we can enhance about the, about the website, right? So that is how you know, oh, these are the issues I can contribute to. But then if you now see a problem on the website, the next thing is not to start working on that website and uh, on that uh, problem and then creating a PR for it. The next thing to do is to go back to the repo for that project and then create an issue, right? And um, when you create an issue, you discuss the problem in that issue that you have created and then allow the maintenance to um, check the issue and then um, see whether it's actually um, right for the project at that particular point in time. So, because, you know, in, in, in a software project like that, an open source project, we usually have project managers that manage um, the, the the project, they manage the, the goals and the objectives, and then even the, the particular um, goal of that project for that particular period. So the maintainers need to know, okay, this issue that you have created, is it priority now, now, or it's going to affect every other thing that um, maybe some other devs are trying to work on right now, or even someone is already working on it. You know, they are able to like point you to the right direction. So it's better to um, raise an, to create an issue, to raise a, the problem before going ahead to, you know, sit down and say you want to work on it and then create PR. So I've seen people, you know, I, I just get to the repo, repository, look at the pull request, and then I see people create pull requests for an issue that we know that right now is not even um, something that we need to get done. And then I go back to the issue and I see that it's not even um, an issue on the on the list of issues that we have, right? So those are those 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 are the kind of things that could actually make your PR to sit for a long time. So um, if you are interested in an issue, you ask to be assigned. Now, what does this do? It helps maintenance to be aware of what you're working on. Then it, it saves you from making PRs that do not align with your, the goals of the project at the moment. I think I've said that. Then again, it informs other developers that the issue they also have in mind is already being worked on. So when you create an issue, everybody can see it and they are able to move on to something else. Then another thing is that uh, it also prevents people from submitting multiple PRs, you know, different people submitting the same PR. Right now, we have that issue currently on the badging um, repo where we have two different people working on one issue. And that's because the second contributor did not even check. I'm not sure they checked whether, to, you know, to see whether that project has been assigned to another person. They didn't have to be assigned. They just created a PR. So if you already follow this um, rule, you will not you will you know you will prevent yourself from um, doing things that people have already done or they are already working on. All right. So next thing I want to talk about is that you need to ensure that you uh, write a well detailed issue. So that's another that's another problem that I noticed that um so. Uh, somebody will create an issue and 
they don't put context into the issue that they are creating. They just say, um, solve this problem, or I notice this bug. And so I see contributors come to the to the to the issue and then begin to ask the creator of that issue that um please could you provide more context? Could you explain what needs to be done so that I can get started on it? You know, if the creator of that issue had already explained so well, there would be need for um more explanation, there would be need for um people to now start commenting. I've seen issues. Um, sitting on the repo for a long time because people don't actually understand that particular issue. And that's because the creator did not explain very well what the issue is. So here I have created an example of a well-detailed issue. Now, as a maintainer, what I, I try to do to solve this problem from our own end is to create a template such that when you go to the repos now, you discover that you can't just create a blank issue. You have to use the template. So it, the, the template is a, like a guide for how to go about creating that issue. So um, we, for instance, now, if it's a bug, we say, oh, image upload, failing for large files. So this person uh, has gone to the, not the badge website, this is just an example, has gone to a particular website and tried to upload an image and they discovered that they couldn't upload um uh, image so probably in trying to tweak around and find out um the, what the issue was um they discovered that they couldn't send files that was above um 5 mb and so um they created a bug for it now the issue they had with that was that there was no error message to the user you know to let them know that oh this thing cannot be done for you because the file you are trying to upload is more than 5 MB. So the user will just try to upload and then the, the software keeps rolling and rolling and rolling um, and there, there is no message. Yeah. So they came here and then they, 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 they let people know, oh, this is an issue. If you want to reproduce it, this is how to go about it. So the steps to reproduce is there. The expected behavior has been written that they expect that the, the image should either be successfully uploaded and if not, to display a clear error message indicating that the file size exceeds the limit. And so then you, you can include a screenshot so that the person that wants to work on that issue understands clearly what the issue is. Then you can also go ahead and talk about the desktop specification. Is it that um, it's only happening with desktop um, computers or even on smartphone also. Then another thing is that you can also provide um, additional context to, to the, if you feel that, oh, this thing needs more explanation, then you can provide additional context. If you go to the template on, on our project, you discover that it, the, I think the additional context is optional and desktop specification optional. But if you feel that it's very important for the person that wants to work on, on, on that particular issue to understand that it's just desktop, they know so that they know where to focus on and not just all the systems. Okay. So I, I want to ask at this time, can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, no, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So um I'll move on to um, adhering to the deadline in the guidelines for completing a task. That's also an issue that we have discovered um, in our community. You see people take on an issue and um, they spend months on that issue, right? And so for instance, now the, the contribution that Nelson said that like he made now, I, um, I, already, I already said probably um, his own contribution is dependent on an API that somebody needs to write for them to be able to, that his own work we have to call, you know, to be able to work, right? So just imagine he finished his own, um, his own task and then we are waiting for the other contributor that is working on the API and then we wait for months. That means that his own contribution is also going to wait because we can't match a PR that is dependent on another, another um, thing that has not already been resolved. Um, I hope um, I, 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 um, I can 
I, I hope I'm able to pass up the across here. So that could delay PRs. So as much as possible as a, as a contributor, you try as much as possible to, to adhere to the deadlines. You know, working on an issue shouldn't take more than two weeks. You know, at, at, I know it's volunteering, but as much as possible, um, what can help is that um, you set a goal to say, okay, I want to work on this issue. You know, like Amza said, uh, he has not been able to have time. And so he didn't bother taking on any issue. But, you know, now that he understands that, okay, um, I think by next week I will have more time. And so it's ready to take on an issue. So it's it's not it doesn't go well to take you know to 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 take an issue and say oh I want to work on this issue and the next two months um you have not done anything about it and we keep commenting are you still working on this issue are you still working on this issue you know it really slows down the progress of the project so um time management you know goal setting can help. Um, in this regard. Then another thing that can help, you know, to, for you to make excellent contribution is to create a draft PR as you keep working, you know, to show your progress. You don't have, to, especially if what you're working on is very um, complex, probably you want to create a new feature, you know, not, maybe it's not um, a simple bug uh, fix. You want to create a feature that is taking time. You could just draft um, a PR so that the maintainer and, and other developers can know that you are already working on this thing and it's very active, you know. And they can even ask if you need help, you know, if, if you have any blockers or something. Uh, they know that, okay, this is where the project is hard or this particular issue that is being resolved, this is where it is hard and this is where it's going. It shouldn't take more than two days or three days, you know, just helps um, every other person to keep tab on what you're doing. And then uh, if you run into any blockers, you have issues, it's very, very okay and very good, you know, to, to try and collaborate with other developers in the community. So that's the whole essence of open source collaboration. Uh, you if you don't have to know it all. In fact, there are times that if, if you are an expert at something, you could run into an issue that you don't really um, understand why it's doing that. Probably you just need context to why that issue is like the way it is. You know, seek um, help seek clarification and you can do that through peer programming you know asking uh, people to join you you know share your code via vs code and then um help uh, one another okay moving on to the next uh yes this is very important right standard and well detailed commit messages in fact that one cannot be um, overemphasized so uh this really helps the person that wants to review your um, PR to understand what you have done and the progression of what you have worked on, okay? And um, this really um, helps them to get to, to move on, on on your PR and be able to approve it as soon as they can. So uh, there is a standard way of writing commits and um, I, I actually want to show us, um, I think I will do that, you know, just to keep, to save time. And also, uh, because I'm moving in between tabs, I'm going to show us this um, mm -hmm. as soon as I am That's done. Then there is another thing. You need to sign off on your commits. You need to sign off uh, on your commits to be able to verify that you are the one that indeed um, wrote that code or and uploaded our PR because uh, just for security measures and all. So there is um a standard and a rule that you must sign off your commit. Otherwise, you won't pass the checks when you are creating your PR. So I have included uh, resources on how to do this in this um, slide. Then again, you need to create well detailed PR after you are finished working on your on your um on your issue. Again, I've provided an example of a well detailed uh, PR. Uh, please hold on.
All right. So, um, for instance, now this is like a, a PR um, on the issue that I just talked about. Now, this person is able to summarize very, very short summary of what they did or what that pure PR is doing, and then they are able to highlight the particular files that they worked on and what they did to those particular files. Yeah. Then um, the tests that they carried out, and then additional notes too. Again, uh, we have created a template for this. Please hold on. Okay, sorry about that. I am I'm trying to um, make sure that the noise around me is kept to a minimum. All right. So um, again, we have created a, a, a well um, detailed te PR template for us in all our records so that it can guide contributors on how to make, uh, know how to um, write about their PR so that the reviewers and the maintainers can understand what they have done. Okay. So, so after you have done that, make sure that you link to the issue that your PR is resolving. And then um, again, uh, at the end of the day, you, once you've done all of that, you need to master the heart of creating PRs that do not have conflict. This one, I, I, I based on our time now, um, we are going to create a separate workshop for that. Maybe the next two weeks that um, we meet, Desmond is going to take us through that um, that um, process of creating PRs that do not have conflict. And even if you have conflict, how do you uh, resolve that conflict so that your PRs can get merged? And then as soon as you get a feedback from a reviewer, try as much as possible to implement it as fast as you can. And then we submit the changes that you have made. Okay, so let me go to, um, I want to show pause. Um, what I mean by signing off on your PRs. Okay, let me just go through this space. So um, this is, okay, can you still see my screen? Or oh, you're still seeing my presentation slide? Uh, your okay. Yeah, so let me. Okay. So let's do this. All right. So I'm here now. Can you see GitHub? Yes. All right. So this is um, a PR that I created recently, and speaking to the well detailed PR is that you just um, make a summary, okay? So I said the goal of this PR is to implement the logic for adding three new metrics to the event version application. And then I, I pointed to where the issue was so that the reviewer can actually click on this particular um, link to go to the issue and try to read through the issue to see if I had actually met um, or done what the the issue is saying is the problem. I actually solved it, or I, I was trying to solve something else. And then um, I listed the files that I worked on. And for my own additional notes, I had to mention that I also touched another file that is not directly related to the PR that I, work, I was working on because it is dependent on me to be able to test my my work locally and so i wrote all of that and then you can see the progression if you look at the the commit i made here let me just highlight it so okay so you can see um again i um, there is a standard way of writing um so you, this one is indicating that it's a feature that i created and um, that i had a checklist for new metrics and all then i i signed off but with my name and, and my email address so there is a way to do this 
you can um, automate this such that um, when you are writing your commit message, you write it in a way that at the end of the day, you, you automatically um, get signed. And that's by adding a GPG key to your GitHub account. So I have created these resources in the slide. I'm going to be sharing that slide in, in, in our um, channel. And then you can go through how to create this um, in your account so that you have your own GPG key that helps you to sign off your commit message. All right, so if you look at um, when I said you link to the issue, so I wasn't able to do that for this particular um, this particular work. And the reason is because, um, and that's why I added this link. So it is not on the same repo. What I worked on here, the issue I'm trying to solve is not on the same repository as this one. So if you, so let's assume that you are working on um, the same repo. All you need to do is to go to the development here. And then you click, and then you can see link, link an issue from this repository, and then it lists it, um, all the all the issues that are present in this repository for you to be able to pick the one you are working on. Okay, so um, so what that does is that uh, it helps the reviewer to be able to. Uh, link this this um these two things together and then you can see that successfully matching this pull request may close these issues so it helps the workflow and it helps all these things to go smooth smoothly helps the reviewer helps the maintainer helps the contributor okay so um let me quickly see what else i wanted to demonstrate Okay, hold on. All right, I think, um, okay, so let me show you this particular, okay, so <clears throat> if you see here, how to write a specification for adding human and machine readable meaning to commit messages, to conventional commits, uh, uh, so you can read through this. In fact, I, I would really encourage everyone to read through these documents to see how they can um, provide a well-detailed commit for their work. You can see the examples here. If it's feature you want to, you are trying to do, if it is docs you are working on, if it's a fix, you know, and all. So I'll be sending all of these documents in the channel. All right, um, Desmond, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so um, what you want to teach us now, is this something that we can run through or we should wait for uh, the other workshop? Yeah, you know. Sorry? You should wait for it. I say in the other workshop, like we, we cover it in the next workshop. Sorry. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, so just, sorry okay. for the interruption. I'm about to leave, so let me just drop this message here. I think I thank you for bringing this up. This is very, very important for the community. Uh, we all we can all agree that uh, sending PR is part of uh, is a major part of the open source uh, work, right? So. I learn a lot when I send my pull request to the curious community because, to be honest, that's the first time I came across how to sign up for your commit. And I do a little bit of research and see what's the rationale behind sending up your commit messages. So uh, thank you. And then at the same time, I would love to have uh, this slide of yours because I'm creating a workshop around on sending PRs, how to send a PR, how to send a good PR that will attract meaningful PR. I mean, so thank you. I will use your slide in a nutshell for that uh, workshop in my community. Thank you.
mic check one two can anybody hear me yeah sure okay i yield the mic thank you very much Anza. <laughs> all right um so do we have questions if anybody has uh, ask questions please if you have questions please Not from me. Okay, thank you. Any other person? No. Okay. Me, no. If you are able. All right. So I actually look forward to see um improved PRs and commit messages in the next round of contributions. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll stop sharing now. Okay, so, okay. So is there any um, question pertaining to the projects that we have attended that anyone would like to ask or something you need help with? Um, would you want to say anything about it? Okay, no problem. So um, we come to the end of the meeting. Thank you very much, everyone. Hope to see you um, in the next um, workshop, and that's in two weeks' time. Then we meet um, in our channel for a securing us um, communication. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. I need this. Bye. Bye.